This is Oscar Beckler recording live from quarantine. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing right now. And I just wanted to leave you guys with a little bit of feedback and my thoughts on the quarter. So I don't think anybody foresaw this. Not, a, uh, not anybody in the school, not anybody in the country, um, that this was the kind of quarter we'd be ending up with. Uh, and it's really unfortunate. I think like, you know, there's a lot that we miss out with on the campus and, you know, some of it can get replicated online. But uh, I think the other thing to think about right now is, uh, you know, we're in a situation now where everyone has a lot of different priorities. And I felt as a professor that I had to consider that school is probably not your number one priority right now. Probably number one is your health. You guys need to make sure you're taking care of your health. Um, number two is your survival in relation to other things. So like maybe that's uh, your job. Uh, a lot of people I know are suddenly out of work. The, uh, anybody who uh, works in like food or um, a lot of people who run like little shops uh, or anything that has anything that deals with like live entertainment, they're suddenly out of work. And that's really unfortunate. And so I feel like, you know, if I, I just felt like, you know, I needed to somehow uh, absolve you guys of your student responsibilities uh, to some extent and, you know, uh, give you guys the freedom to take care of what's most important, which is yourself and your families and your friends and your community. And at the other, on the other hand, I wanted to make sure that I was still giving you guys something of um, some, you know, valuable tutorials and feedback and stuff. And this was really upsetting to me because I suddenly got blindsided by uh, having to watch my kids. So I've been watching my kids as a homeschool teacher now for the last week, uh, ever since the Thursday where Lake Washington shut down. Uh, my kids' school also got shut down. So this is a very rare treat for me to get here to sit here and record for you. And I'm doing this because I just set them up with technology and they're allowed to, you know, be television zombies right now in the other room. And I explicitly told them, no fighting or I'm taking it all away. And so regarding this, like where does Photoshop land in all this? Where does digital image editing land in all this? And I feel like, you know, it's something where on one hand, you might look at this and it's off your plate entirely um, because it's too stressful. And on the other hand, I thought we should consider how Photoshop and digital image editing and just playing around is something that you can use as something to relieve your stress. So I'm working on something that I'm going to be doing over quarantine right now, which is I wanted to try and keep in touch with my friends. Uh, and you know play some old-fashioned Dungeons and Dragons and this uh, presents some challenges in that suddenly like I have no I have no taste for a lot of the very serious kind of role-playing that we would otherwise do where maybe it would be something like um, you know political allegory and you know fighting plague zombies you know, some people are taking this uh, quarantine as an excuse to watch a lot of zombie movies. You know, and I don't necessarily have the stomach for that, and I don't necessarily think my friends do either. Uh, so the RPG that I wanted to run was going to be, you know, based on a long-running campaign of ours, which is, you know, we're gonna play as, you know, there's like this, you know, flying pirate ship, and you know, the adventurers are always something on there, and this was gonna be like the cats who live on the pirate ship and their, and their adventures. And so I actually like, you know, made some pre-made characters. Um, and they're all like allegorically the same. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use digital image editing to de-stress. And hopefully while doing this, I can talk to you guys about my process a little more and also a little bit about wet on wet technique, which is my preferred way of painting. So I've got these various character ideas and like you know, if you open these up, they've all got descriptions like 
teacup is the equivalent of a halfling rug, which halfling means kitten. By the way, I think I have a child coming out here. Daddy? Yes, Fia? Oh, I'm very sorry. You're going to have to plug it in, remember? I did not. I only couldn't plug it, but it does die. Oh, well. How about you go and chill out with my phone? Okay. But I'm Okay. Here you go. Then you get to buy me a new game. Go away. But then you get to buy me a new game on my Kindle. You want to say hi to my class? Awesome. Hi, my class. Daddy, can you get to buy me I'm recording. Goodbye. Bye. So again, like, that's the new normal is, uh, you know, how do you get any work done when your kids are running out? And, you know, some, you know, everyone's got different, uh, problems here. Some of us have kids, some of us have jobs Some of, that are really hard. Some of us don't have a job and that is um, suddenly hard in a different way. So I just wanted to make sure we're like thinking through this um, in a way that's like humane and kind to our ourselves and the other people in our class. So I don't know, let's, uh, you know, first off, this is a mood board I put together. This is a program called Pure Ref. And maybe I can find an about thing. Well, anyways, PRF down here. Uh, it's a very cool program. And I quickly just put together a mood board of, you know, if I'm going to draw some cats and make them kind of silly and, you know, character profile ish, I got to start by asking myself, who else has done this problem and how did they solve it? And, you know, I need some reference to real life cats. I think I want more house cats. And so let's go ahead and draw a teacup. Teacup is um, the halfling rogue equivalent cat. He's a little kitty cat. He's black and silky. And he's going to be like this guy. I'm recording. What's up? And let's just do this as a wet on wet problem. So I'm going to start with some basic thoughts about what do kittens look like, how silly do I want this. Um, and maybe do a doodle page. So I'll have this one be my doodle page. And on a doodle page, what I do is I'm going to assume that I'm not actually looking for a finished product right now. Just I'm gonna fill this up with little doodles. And I am gonna take this pure ref board, by the way, and I'm gonna move it to my other monitor. So although you guys might not be able to see it, I want you guys to be aware that I am looking over there fairly often just to try and refresh my memory about what I wanna be looking at, what I wanna be drawing, what do other people do when they're making kittens. So I'm drawing in a way where I think first about like basic shapes. So here's like a head, here's a neck, here's a body. And with kittens and small baby like things, the more the uh, proportions are um, really small and goopy, the cuter it is. But you know, a lot of these doodles are something where I'm trying to spend only like 30 seconds to two minutes on it because maybe I like it, maybe I don't, but it's time to move on to the next one. I think that could be cuter. I'm just using Krita's equivalent of a pencil. Again, I've been uh, trying to think about like open education resources all quarter and suddenly like 
um, the quarantine means a lot of us have been trapped away from the school without tools that we would otherwise enjoy, such as Photoshop, such as tablets. And I think it's like a perfect storm uh, example of why this concept is important. Like, you can't let uh, a global crisis mean that a tiny piece of internet paper means you don't get to do any work. Um, imagine being like, imagine like a law where, you know, you're not allowed to use pencils anymore um, because of, I don't know, a hurricane. That would be insane, you know. If you were trapped on a desert island and you had a pencil, you would find a way to make some art with it. Or at least I would. Actually, I think this might be, I'm going to make this guy a little more manly. I have one who's kind of based on the cat from Aristocrats. Aristocats. Who's like, you know, big handsome Tom. He's got like 50 children walking around the ship. Doesn't take care of any of them. Some of them are small and cute. Just some notes on, and you can see like, by the way, I don't care about um, size or scale or getting it right. My goal here is just a stream of consciousness, get the whole page blown up. And by looking at other people's art and actual kittens, like you start seeing like, how can I, how can I make this even smaller and cuter? Hi, Felix. I kind of like this one. Maybe this is going to be. Maybe this will be a teacup. Sure, we can work off this. That's cute enough. There we go. Just grab it now. And a lot of times what I prefer to do is I go until I've filled this whole page. And at some point, one of these doodles would be something that I feel like I can translate into something better. So I'm using M for marquee tool. A lot of uh, these hotkeys are the same as in Photoshop, especially if you go to settings, configure Krita. Photoshop compatible for the keyboard shortcuts. But, you know. So now I've got that enlarged. I'll put all these in a group. And I'm going to start working on this a little more now that it's big and I can zoom around a little more. Uh, there's something that you can do, which is 
Trace. Uh, oftentimes with creatures, there's sort of a, a natural flow from their nose to their eyes up to their ear. You know, I, I really wanted to have suddenly this insatiable urge to run this campaign to play this game with my friends specifically because of how like low pressure it felt as a storyline or as something that we could do together trying to get that cat w in And I should probably think through maybe some more fantastical elements. So what does this guy have? Maybe he's got like a, a collar with a bell on it. But because he's so sneaky, he's just a little guy and he's the rogue of the party. And he's so sneaky that it never even rings. Maybe I can think about hierarchy here. How can I? Make sure there's good space between his collar. You know, I've got this sketch here, but I'm still trying out things that are like very different. If you don't feel confident in your anatomy for how to draw a cat, I have terrible news for you. The only way to get good at it is by looking at cats, looking at pictures of cat anatomy, and studying it. And then the only way that that study ever gets internalized is if you draw with it. However, I have great news. This is your excuse to go draw some. And if you're like me, that's like my favorite thing in the world to do, is to sit around and draw. So this guy should have sharp claws. And maybe I'll have like one little white spot here. I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. I'm going to fill the entire thing with 40% gray. going to set this to multiply and merge it down. I'm going to lock its movement. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the brush. So I like doing that because now I can start getting into the wet on wet painting. And just to show you how this works, I'm going to start with some color palette stuff. So here's various cat images all over. And we want to capture that lighting. And so it's handy to have a really nice color palette to work from. One that I use a lot is, let me see if I can find it. I will just have this, I leave this on my desktop. Oops. Just grab it in the broadcaster software. Where did you go, palette? There it is. Ah. Let me 
exit this new layer. Oh wait, never mind. I'm dragging and dropping this in, and I'm going to use this as a new reference image, which means I can put it over here and completely ignore it so it's not part of the document. You'll notice that it's using this pin tool to do that. And that's going to be something where I can reference that. I'm also going to find a picture of uh, a cat. Let's just go and find, let's find an adorable black cat kitten. that I'm going to save this over here Just looking for something with good colors. Yeah. Good colors and good light. I'm just going to insert these as reference images. This sort of gives me an idea of what I need to color here. So normally I think it would be ideal to um, get a bit more of a sketch in here, but if you do enough oil painting, you can't get used to the idea that, you know, when you paint an oil, like if you waste the entire uh, first 30 minutes of an oil painting on the drawing, then you don't have any time to paint. So what I love about oil painting is the idea that, especially direct painting and wet on wet painting, is the idea that you just go right in and uh, start it off. So I'm using the same brush and I'm actually not doing wet on wet yet. But at some point, I'm just gonna get used to the idea that my painting and my drawing is the final uh, piece. And if I get there as fast as possible, all the better. So again, when I've taught this in the past, I've gone so far as to make ridiculous proclamations like only one, allow one layer, only allow one brush, and no undo steps. And the idea is that that is what it feels like when you oil paint. And so um, if you just acclimatize to it as fast as possible, then you're going to do fine. I'm going to do a little bit more on the drawing, but I'm going to switch over to a specific brush now. Uh-oh, it's good to go. And I'm going to use some of these oil brushes. So these ones right here. And these are all brushes where, just to show how this works, let's say I have pure black. I, switch, I hit D so that my color is pure black. If I draw with this, and this is at full opacity, you'll note that when I press very hard, black immediately comes out. It's like I have a loaded brush. If I push very soft, it's like whatever color I start with the, uh, touching is the load. And what's cool is like, if I touch light to start and then I press hard, it'll still bring black out. So I could use this to maybe 
Look at my reference. I think these cat ears are going to be a little more, you know, that shape, straight up and down. I'll just use I and O to lower and increase my opacity. With these reference images, I can do stuff like color pick fur there. I can have this be where the fur is lighter. Where is the fur lighter? Well, I'm going to look at this reference and try and examine it. So I notice that this black cat is very black. Um, what happens is that the light sort of hits it on the side, and that's where you get this sort of sheen effect. So I think a lot of this is going to be a matter of. If it's facing us, it's going to be black. If it's underneath him and it's a shadow, the light it would be reflecting is a shadow and therefore it would be black. And if it's facing away from us and our environment is behind us, it's going to be lighter. Let's get some eyeball color. select black again and with full opacity at least get something in there it starts looking at like eyeballs because if you get that in as fast as possible the better I'm also going to switch to white and right off the bat put a white dot in there that's going to represent which side this is lit from I think I want this cat to be lit from over here let's actually give ourselves a little hint you know what? With wet on wet, if that's something I paint with oil, I can always just get rid of it later. Maybe even put some right there. Just start telling us. And on one hand, you can, you know, if you prefer cross hatching, you can cross hatch. What I like to do is try and use big flat, big nasty brush and get everything in place as fast as possible, which means big brush first, little brush is second. So I'll do something like that. And then for the transition here, start doing something like that. Why do I like wet on wet painting? Uh, well, I like it because I think it's a low brain power. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not thinking about layers at all. And that's so pleasant. You know, it's so nice to just dive in here. And think that. Opposite of that. I also like it because, you know, I really, I really respect a lot of the historical precedents of um, wet on wet painters like Haddon Sunblom and um, Tom Lavelle. 
Their art really appeals to me personally. So a lot of time, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could do this with high opacity and a small brush and cross hatch in some black here. Then get this color and gently go over it for a soft transition. And then that way, like, you know, again, there's only like two or three things that we care about here, which is hard and soft edges. Is it the right value? And uh, is it the right hue saturation? I'm going to start trying to vibrate my colors a little. Vibrating your colors means that you just throw random colors in here. And um, if you're aware that at some point, like if it's the right value, but you'll blur it out later, then you don't have to worry so much. I'm going to throw some like red and ears. So I think this paw over the, on this side would have a little bit of pink, maybe, for these paw points. And by the way, just to show you what I'm looking at on my other monitor, I've got this cat picture which means that I can start having something of a full-on render. And I'm largely looking at that as I paint this. I'm just trying to get some of these details in. What a silly thing to paint. That makes me happy. I'm like, you know, what? what's my point here? I wanted this to be something where, you know, I'm modeling the behavior I want to see in you guys. And to some extent, that means, um, for me, taking care of my ability to um, lower my expectations, de-stress, prioritize what's important. And so, you know, I think like normally I would come in here with a lot more of a plan <laughs> for what I was doing. This is totally not what I thought I was going to try and record this morning. But I feel like it's appropriate because I'm doing like, you know, step one. What's going to make me feel a little more sane today? such a fluffy butt. Uh, 
then so what I think I like about this is that this gets you to a point of completion very very quickly um, even if it might be a mess but then like you can actually like take individual chunks of this and just temporarily put it on hold um, until you like uh, fix problems that you're facing so like what about this pot like I could just create a new layer now you know what yeah I'll create a new layer and what if I like just fill the whole thing in cover this pot up and I just temporarily use this layer as a way to render one specific problem so I could like temporarily switch back to a pencil and ink I think I want these claws to read in profile, so I think I want them to be like. So something like that, right? probably better to use like specific ref uh, reference like, I should probably go and look up you know what does a cat paw look like even when all the claws are extended but on the other hand maybe that's not the answer a lot of times what happens is you get so confounded with having the right reference that like you never actually like finish a painting <laughs> and so uh, you know the guys that I think who are doing the best art in the world um, you can find them on uh, social media and YouTube and stuff and they're just posting like one thing a day in other words they're so um, used to sitting down and getting something done for the day that um, for them the crazy thought is not like whether they're doing it right or wrong the crazy thought for them is um, whether they're taking a break and on the other hand like I don't think you know, I've, I'm starting to try and work on this myself. Uh, I think sometimes uh, I spend too much time worrying about, uh, you know, I waste too much time on, you know, a diatribe about like, this is what they're doing in the industry. And you know, it's fascinating how much you can argue about what they're doing in the industry without ever actually doing anything. <laughs> that is related to the industry. So I think like I'm trying to have less of that um, I'm trying to have less of that you know, conviction and more of that habit. And again, I hope like this is something that resonates with you because if nothing else as a teacher, I hope that I can model good habits for you guys. I'm going to try using one of these brushes. This is a expand brush, I think. First, I got to merge this down. Huh? And in the brush setting, F5. And I want this to go in the opposite direction, which is probably around here somewhere. I want expand. It's cool because these brushes are very similar to some of the uh, liquify tool in Photoshop. I'm messing a lot of this up. But again, I think that's good I think when you're doing wet on wet the instant you're like too scared of hurting your baby that's when like you're too scared to develop it further so my first goal here should be like making sure that it's got like stuff in the right place and I don't need to worry about messing up all this paint because I am thinking about this paint the way that I would about uh, other things like um, if this was like a 30 second gesture drawing, I wouldn't have any fear about breaking it. Um, 
And so I am trying to do more of that. Like, be okay with her. I'm going to Google kitten claws, though. There's one. How about kitten teeth? Yeah. So now I can start to see a couple things that maybe I want to change. I'm going to switch over to this brush. Why not? And I'll start by maybe making this guy a little lighter. I'm actually using a different Krita brush now, which is the Shapes Fill brush. And I like this brush explicitly because of its brute force destructiveness. And this can be terrifying to some, but um, it makes it so that you can just get stuff done really, really fast if you're ready for this. So, like, I could even go. There's Kitty Nose. that side and start just getting colors in place for future use create a new layer specifically so I can get some eyeballs in that's the cutest spot for this eye that's the cutest size for this eye is it big about this eye. Sure. 
the cat shape. I'm just really quickly like blasting this in as fast as possible. How can I like make sure? Like your goal should sometimes be when you're doing wet on wet, how fast can I get to the entire canvas being filled up? I need to see a kitty cat bell. Yeah, that looks like a car. I'm gonna do a little bit of thought process now on a new layer, which I'm going to set to some lower opacity. And I'm just gonna try and think through some of this stuff that I haven't yet solved on this. So for instance, here is my created document. And what do people put on their cats when they are fantasy warrior cats? Maybe that is something like a collar. Maybe that's rough. This is a rogue, so maybe I should make some rogue stuff like a little dagger collar or Maybe I can take a minute, just really quick, work out some of these finer details. I like to have a little bit of stabilizer on. There's a natural arc your hand is going to use. And you can use four and six to rotate your canvas on a free dot.
think a kitten would wear a hat. He's still such a little baby. Maybe somebody knitted him a little hat. That's too much. Did you get called? And you can even like take a break and do some more official modeling of your form. And I'm going over here and finding especially on See, something like this. There's like two separate forms for the nose, and then it comes up to this larger area, and it has the little classic divot. Just switching back and forth between these. Susan, go to the other room. It's too noisy. Put your headphones in. Multiply, which means it's now multiplying on top. 
I think this guy's color is officially going to be like a dark green. The dark green sort of cat. Go back to this layer. Like this. Turn off stabilizer. shadow here. I'm going to try and just like this dark green. I'm going to lower my opacity. Start getting some shadow coming in here. Use a headphone. No, oh. I'm gonna change this back to normal. I get some more of these kitten pictures. I think I'm losing some of his snout. So, I like to just occasionally think through the geometry if I'm finding a problem. And that's another thing, is like, why would you start with a drawing? With a drawing, you've solved all these problems. Susan, headphones. Um, again, like, I'm trying not to take... I just covered my whole face up. I'm gonna think through this more. I wanna think. How can I make this cat cuter? Maybe I'll just redraw the whole thing. Oh yeah, that's better. I spent all that time painting my little kitty and now I destroyed it. Oh well. You know, I think, you know, wet on wet is not for everybody. Um, you have to, you know, figure out like how to embrace this sort of, embrace destruction is what I sometimes say. But I wanted more eye tilt here.
think I still wanted to wear this hat. But this probably means that on a geometry level. Now again, like this is where a lot of people would argue that uh, I wasted some time earlier thinking through color and making layers and uh, that that was a mistake. But there's another way of looking at it, which is that you can think of it as um, that entire process, everything I've done so far is still drawing. It's not painting yet. I'm still just trying to draw my way out. Yeah, that guy's pretty cute now. In fact, close down my other layers. Let's merge all this crap down. Why? Because we embrace this. Green and yellow, so that's a good deep color palette. I need to draw some shadow in here. Like, to some extent, one thing you can do to help yourself with this process is just choose brushes at random because it'll help you get used to the idea that the brush choice isn't the thing that matters. The thing that matters is sitting around and bashing this until it starts looking like something that you like. And again, this is going to be a matter of several things. So at this point, I'm like really going through a lot of my old stuff. Color picking.
Yeah, I'm making pretty big changes as I go. Starting to look like a thing, right? Maybe what I'll do now is do the black and white treatment where I just. I'm gonna try and plan a little more. So this is what it looks like in black and white. And this can be a helpful way to just think through things a little bit more. Maybe I want to actually do this in black and white. Hello? There's a cat. What do you think of him? Cat. Yeah? <laughs> what do you think I should do next one? This is supposed to be a cat who... Whiskers? You think whiskers? Alright. I'm going to switch to my palette knife. Yeah, it says my phone. Then I have nothing. You have nothing? You don't have a phone, you have nothing. What's up? Mm, not because I'm recording. Mm. You can draw. No. I won't be much longer, don't worry. Child. This is another one of the wet blenders.
use that. Why do I paint in Krita instead of Photoshop? I actually prefer painting in Krita sometimes because there's a couple of, uh, like Photoshop has the wet media brushes and I think they're just like too complex. Like they want you to sample like a whole area and smudge it and uh, they can really like kind of overthink things. And as a result, like, you know, if you just want a different, if I would just want to blend from uh, this color to black, all I have to do is hold it light with some of these, like with this one. If I go light, it chooses that color. If I go hard, it chooses the other color. And that's like just such a simple two option choice. And it takes a lot of work to get that same option in Photoshop. But also, some of you guys don't even have Photoshop. I think Photoshop changed to have like temporary free licenses for everybody during uh, plague season. But again, it's only temporary. And who knows, maybe like this will be something that they have to consider. Like maybe it'll stay. So at this point, maybe what I start doing is I actually approach this like color pencils where I'm going to start using uh, some of these shading pencils. And a lot of like getting the exact color I need can be a matter of just um, color picking it. So like I, I need to get some of this color on the side of this key space, right? Slightly more lit than this side. And as this paw reaches out, it gets out of the shadow. It'll be a lit on that side. Hungry? Yes. Did you say that? I'm hungry. Alright, first you have to tell me what I should fix my stomach at. Uh, where are whiskers? Where are whiskers? Look at that whiskers. Like that from here. Let's move these paws. Uh. See yourself? Yes. Can you say hi? eyeballing a lot of this anatomy other parts of it I'm going in and double checking
Well, guys, let me just get one last little bit of this bell. I need a hard edge. Let me switch to a hard edge brush like this pink. I'm a soft edge. Let's switch I'm to a soft edge hungry. brush. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'm Gonna be like this all next quarter for me. I might work on this more, but for now, it's snack time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great break. And let me know if you have any questions about, um, you know, image editing or Photoshop or anything at any given point, like, a, you know, next quarter, over the break, a year from now, 10 years from now. Just feel free to, you know, shoot me a question. And, you know, I, w I hope that, you know, even in a global plague, I can be a resource you can count on. So thank you very much. Susan, can you say bye? Bye-bye.